Ben, what the hell have you done? Do you have any idea how much insanity this is causing? I can't even... Ben, hold on. I have to fire an idiot for cause. This was the first I'd heard from Petra in a while. Ben, get your ass out of bed and call me now! And judging by the messages she'd left me overnight, something major was happening. I hit her back right away. Well, Ben, congratulations. You now have us all fully engulfed in flames. Would you like to explain why? Uh, I had no clue what was happening. Anytime today, Ben. Petra picked up on that. I... Oh, what, you what, didn't what, do what, this. What do we even... I don't have time for this. Check your feed. Call me back. I did what she said. And the feed hit me with a tsunami of information unlike anything I'd ever seen. Every journalism outlet, every social hub, seemingly every person alive was buzzing about the same thing. The leak. The leak. It had hit the open network overnight, and it was all about the Master Chief. I didn't understand. As far as the public was concerned, reports of Spartan activity had almost always been categorically unknowable. And now he was front page fodder? I skimmed the stories frantically, saw the same tags popping up over and over. Collusion with the enemy, civilian casualties, abducting a hero, oh, assassinating an icon. Oh no, oh my god. What the Master no. Chief what? did that? What the hell is going on? Those were just the facts reported by journalists. The opinions of the public were far scarier. Like missiles firing wildly in all directions from every corner of inhabited space. This leak about the Master Chief, whatever it said, had already begun deeply dividing people. Sending ideologues on both sides scrambling to gain the moral high ground. I needed to see the source material. It didn't take long to find. Everyone had the same file. A suppressed incident report from an embassy in the outskirts that had already been viewed almost a half a billion times. What it said was perfectly clear. Ten days ago, in the outer colonies, the chief had suddenly appeared in the middle of a densely populated city at a regional embassy, where inside, long-awaited peace talks between human and alien delegates were on the cusp of an historic agreement. The chief stormed in and instantly killed the bodyguard of Outer Colonies Ambassador Richard Sakibo, starting a firefight that would claim 19 human lives. He abducted the ambassador and blasted an escape path through security personnel, mowing them down with extreme prejudice as he escorted the alien delegation to safety. Once aboard his waiting evac ship, they fled the planet, leaving years of diplomatic work in ruins. The next day, local officials picked up a signal beacon that led them to a nearby field. There, they found the architect of the talks, revered peace activist Richard Sakibo, last seen in the chief's custody, lying dead in the grass. I'm Benjamin Giroux, and this is Hunt the Truth. Petra, what is happening? I don't know, but I've been fact-checking for seven hours and it looks bad. The Earth hacks are calling him the fallen Spartan. Bastards. Wait, wait, you, you think this might actually be true? I need it now. You got it, Petra. Just, just tell me now, was this Pharaoh? Did you do this? No, I, I don't, no, I, don't I told her so. I didn't know. Which was technically true, but it was a cop-out. Of course it was Pharaoh. But why? It didn't make sense. Why smear the chief like this? After everything he'd done to save our asses? After everything ONI had done to him? Over the years, he'd faced unimaginable catastrophes. We had no idea how many lives had hung in the balance. ONI kept us all in the dark. But whether the chief had always made the right call or not wasn't the issue. He should never have had to shoulder all that weight. But now he was shouldering all the blame. It wasn't right. As Petra relayed what some of the talking heads were saying about Chief on Earth, I started getting downright pissed. Then, she was gone. Waypoint was gone. My compad, pad, everything, gone. Your quadrant is experiencing unusually high volume. 
On-site diagnostics are required. Would you like me to schedule an appointment? Yes. First availability is in 12 days at 3 p.m. Would you like me to schedule this appointment? Oh God, this is a joke. I'm sorry. I did not get that. Would you like me to schedule this Yes. Appointment, appointment scheduled. All services disabled. Goodbye. No, dude, mother. They were cutting my communications off for 12 days? This was no quadrant failure. O&I was trying to shut me down. And of course, they were doing it quietly. Mishak's security hacks had been keeping me a step ahead of them for the most part, but I didn't have time for this. I had to find out if we were actually stirring things up. I needed to find Mishak, and to do that, I needed a safe place with secure working comms. So I packed some essentials and headed out, taking back routes, dodging surveillance, Moving my workspace to an undisclosed location was a precaution I'd been needing to take anyway. ONI's latest move had just got me to pull the trigger. When I got where I was going, my contact helped me set up shop. And once I was live, this was the message that was waiting for me. Bento Box, loving what you did with the story, man. Really great pacing. But that last episode, not in the same. She's missing a certain, I don't know, me element? Ha! Anyway, I'm around, you know, give me a call. After disappearing for eight days, Mishak Marathi was just calling to say hi. He was the most frustrating human being I'd ever met. Benigen. Mishak, I, I was certain you were dead. I mean, uh, I could... you were wrong? Mishak, where in the hell have you been? Ben, listen, I'm sorry. Super sorry. But I had to go dark. I had to disappear. Okay, but... I asked him if it had something to do with the disturbances he'd been tracking in the outskirts. He said no. It was this other thing I was checking on for you. I don't know anything for sure yet, but I will soon. Fine, but listen, I realize you operate in a den of secrets, but you could have at least warned me before disappearing, I mean, right? No, not really. It's true. I operate in a very mysterious den of secrets. But this mission was on a level three stories below the subfloor of the secondary basement of my den of secrets. I shouldn't even be thinking about it. Just believe me. You not knowing was the only way. Thankfully, Mishak laid off the riddles for a bit, segueing into news from the outskirts. My last episode was having an effect. People were listening, taking it to heart, and they were pissed. The kidnappings, the military-grade augmentations. Unless they were looking for somewhere to bury the truth, ONI seemingly had no regard for the outer colonies. This was an old ache for these people. Back when their survivalist spirit was bordering on independence, ONI had given the outer colonies their full attention. They pulled out all the stops to crush the oppressive insurrectionists. No one was shedding tears over that. But then, when the Covenant showed up and started glassing their planets to genocidal hell, the outer colonies were widely left to fend for themselves. It was this principle of selective intervention that had never sat well. But where my story had started to reheat that unrest in the outer colonies, last night's leak it brought it to a boil. So the idea is the chief went into berserker mode, right? That drip, drip, drip has a very different effect depending on where you live. All those herbivorous babies on Earth think they deserve their own dedicated Spartan messiah. Like he's gonna camp out on the moon waiting to kill aliens or karate chop meteorites to keep them safe. So the word rogue panics them. But Mishak says it wasn't like that in the outer colonies. Whether the embassy story was true or not, the way they saw it, the chief wasn't the problem. Oh, and I was using him the same way the UEG had always used them. For utility, when useful, but always disposable. Sure, nobody really wants a seven-foot-tall murder machine with mad skills showing up in their neighborhood. But in the outer colonies, Oni is still the real monster. My fury at Mishak had subsided. I was glad he was back. If I was going to pull off confronting Oni and, and exposing everything to the senators... I needed as much ammo as possible. And luckily, he was on the same page. After hearing my interview with Petrovsky, he'd buried his face in the slush, curating decades of data and the research of his nutjob predecessors, compiling sort of a greatest hits of ONI's atrocities. He pushed me to a scatter graph of every case of exotic pediatric autoimmune disorders for the first few decades of the century. Any kid who had a disease like John's. After some variable tweaking, a galactic map of human space popped up, decorated with clusters of dots, one for each sick kid. He told me I was looking at a reasonably accurate representation 
of where every single defective clone ONI planted had died. Wow. Wow, he says. <laughs> of course, wow. But you're about to turn into a wow when you see this. He overlaid the graph on another map that showed the distribution of human population. He asked me what I noticed. It's not random. It's not random. Ben, never be a statistics professor. This is the opposite of random, okay? For their Spartan abductions, only heavily favored the outer colonies. It's like their favorite candy store, except instead of candy, they were scooping up child soldiers. Because it's easier to cover your tracks out there. Yeah, and you could easily make the argument that these children's lives were assigned a much lower value than, say, those of Earth kids or kids from Mars. Genetically, they will be no worse than inner colony specimens, but as to the human cost, Outer colonies, kids, just spend easier. I'm not sure if the data was going to be conclusive enough for the senators, but the implication was certainly heinous enough. The whole point of abducting kids in the first place was to create super soldiers for crushing the insurrection. That was the original mandate of the Spartan program. But in their secret child poaching, O and I had favored the very same parts of the outer colonies they were targeting for that military campaign. So years later, when the Spartans landed their bloody anti-insurrectionist campaign in the outer colonies, many of those Spartans were simply the harvested children of those communities coming home. But these native sons weren't fighting for their homeland. They weren't there to protect their families. They were carrying out the political agenda of ONI, serving the very government that had violated their families and torn them from their childhoods. As far as the not-in-my-backyard philosophy goes, this was double-dipping by O&I, enough to incite pure rage. Oh, but Mashak had been working work. on something else, too. I've been tracking old police scanner data, putting it together for your big whistleblow. Makes a pretty gnarly case. Okay. Did you ever wonder what would happen if one of Oni's doomed-to-die clones didn't die? I hadn't considered that possibility. But it was chilling. What happened to them? It's not what happened to them. It's what happened to the people they'd been made to replace. Two soldiers ran into a perfect copy of themselves. Think about it. You were secretly plucked from your childhood bed, thrown into a totally different life. And now, years later, you meet a mirror image of yourself. Someone who got to keep living your life. I mean, they'd probably seem to be more you than you. Two records I found, two soldiers, both suicides. A story like that would be hard to listen to, but that's horrible. It would also be hard to ignore. Just try to get me that. I just hoped Pharaoh would know how to reach me. Don't worry, she'll find you, probably soon. But you know, who knows? Her mysterious set of secrets is like under the planetary crust. Just keep me posted. Whenever you guys penetrate the dragon's lair and explore your truth serum. I'll be standing by to track the ripples. Thanks, Mishak. I was having trouble falling asleep in my new workspace the next time I heard a voice calling me in the dark. This time, though, Pharaoh sounded human. Are you enjoying the show? No, actually, I'm not. After everything ONI's done, people are calling for the chief's The infection head. goes to the core, Ben. When you cut all the way in to extract it, you can't always control what sprays but out. But you're the one spraying it. You chose to smear the chief. I'm not smearing anyone. Everything I leaked was real and But, but true. we don't know the whole story, and the implications of this story the are the- The only implication is that an aging Spartan may be going off the rails. And sadly, it may be true. Your story set the table for that. When you break children to make warriors, you take a risk of burying psychological damage deep in your soldiers. And for critical decision makers, that's a liability. I don't know what motivated the chief to shoot up that embassy, and I don't know what he's doing now. But he is off leash. He is proving the liability. All I did was expose it by peeling back the very layers of Oni secrecy under which that liability was born and allowed to fester. I didn't know what to say. This felt all wrong to me. Ben, the chief is the savior of humanity. I know that. The true patriots know it too. This is the painful part. Right now, the chief is being chopped down, but he will be vindicated. 
This is how we puncture to the core. By sacrificing the chief in the short term, we've opened a deep hole, and when the bleeding slows, it's Oni's exposed nerve that will get all the cold scrutiny. It's just hard hearing what they say about him, and people are going nuts. I mean, a lot of the inner colonists are actually denouncing him. They're terrified. And the anger in the outer colony seems to be turning ugly fast. You, the you see that, right? The blood of their hero is spraying in their face. This is exactly what we need. This is the chaos I said would happen. I guess I just didn't think it was gonna be like this. Chaos has a high price, Ben. But the pieces are moving. Our opportunity has arrived. Pharaoh told me that as of this morning, the meeting had been scheduled. Personnel were already en route to Earth. And in a few days' time, ONI Brass would be testifying in front of high-ranking UEG senators in closed sessions. Pharaoh was going to hack in and get me a direct, unbroken feed so that I could lay out ONI's ugly secrets to a handful of the most senior lawmakers in the land. I had to prepare fast. I was anxious there wasn't enough time to make Meshach's data convincing enough, but Pharaoh gave me an idea that could amp up the persuasion. She listened in as I made the call. Anthony? Hey, man, how you doing? I just laid it right out there. Do you want to help bring down ONI? He didn't respond. I started to get nervous, but then he spoke up. You bet your ass I do. What do you need from me? Petrosky was in. I gave him marching orders and hung up. I'm so happy to hear Pharaoh that. seemed pleased. Things seemed to be falling into place. So that's your real voice? For the most part. Just off enough to be untraceable. So, so why'd you switch it up? What happened to the scary voice? Well, we're about to go somewhere scary. I wanted you to feel like you knew who would be fighting at your side. I appreciate that. I couldn't believe we were really going to do this, but I was lit up and ready to go. Ben, I wanted to give you a heads up. There's still one more leak coming. What, what, what do you mean? It's the icing on the cake. Just to keep the pieces in motion. Okay, okay, What? what is it? When is it hitting? It just did. I pulled up my public feed. It took a moment. And then it hit. A security video from the Outer Colonies Regional Embassy. Pharaoh. Pharaoh was already gone, Is this real? but her latest leak was live. Right now, millions of people across occupied space were all watching the same thing. Master Chief Petty Officer Spartan 117, seemingly unprovoked, waging a brutal assault against the Peace Consulate on Biko. Please join me for the next episode of Hunt the Truth.